I've wanted a capacitor subbox for ages, and, uh, well, finally got around to building one. It was a nice, easy, fun project, and if you have a well-stocked uh, capacitor junk box, you may have most of the parts you need. So my initial idea was to uh, to do something much cruder and simpler than what you're seeing here. I was thinking maybe just, you know, a few values per decade with a couple of rotary or uh, selector switches to select the decade and the value. And, uh, you know, then I got to thinking, well, it'd be nice to have a bit finer resolution and started to come up with various possible schemes, but then I noticed, oh, you can get nice, cheap uh, thumbwheel switches, push-button thumbwheels from China, Inc., AliExpress. So that sort of gave me the impetus to move ahead and, and just do it. So here's the finished box. Um, nine decades. <laughs> Obviously, it's not uh, accurate in a monotonic sense. But uh, sure, you know, you can have all nine digits active, and if you increment the one puff, it will still increase the capacitance by one puff, uh, even if the, the actual value isn't what it's showing on the display. It'll be close, though. So here, I'll just do a quick uh, run through the construction, and then we'll have some video of it in action. Will I ever use this thing for real? I don't know, maybe, <laughs> but it's kind of nice to have, and it was a fun, fun way to while away a bit of lab time. So here's the, the box I found in my junk pile. Perfect condition, except for the paint, <laughs> but otherwise a very nice box. Um, after a few hours of uh, scrounging through my uh, capacitor collection, I managed to uh, come up with all the caps I would need, or almost all the caps I would need, except for some of the higher values. And I just sorted them out into a, a temporary uh, set of drawers. Here are my two favorite LC meters. That's what I use to uh, fairly accurately measure the caps. And, you know, get them as close as possible to the, uh, the binary values. They're obviously not standard values, or at least not the uh, 4 and 8. Um, here's the uh, box after I repainted the lid and got my pet beaver to uh, nibble away the opening for those uh, thumbwheel switches. Here are the thumbwheels. Um, you can see how simple the construction's going to be. They're binary. You want binary thumb thumb wheels, of course, not uh, decade ones. Um, I won't waste my time drawing a schematic or anything like that. I mean, it's it's pretty self evident how this goes together. You just tie all the commons of the thumb wheels together, and that's one terminal of your cap. And then the uh, the one two four eight terminals go to appropriate capacitors. And the other side of those, all those caps just get tied together, and that's your other terminal. Couldn't be simpler. So here's the uh, the lowest decade, the uh, the single, the puff, <laughs> the puff units decade. So from right to left, that's a one puff, two puff, four puff, and eight, or at least that's you know as close as I could get. I did. I, I have managed to at least make each decade monotonic. So if you increment the uh, the thumb wheel, the value will go up, and usually by a <laughs> something approaching uh, the correct amount. Here it is, not quite finished, but just with the, the thumb wheels sort of sitting in there and a, a a print of the label just to check the the fit before I print it on a, on a transparent plastic sheet, adhesive sheet. Here is the uh, assembly almost finished. I did add a few more lytics on the, the far right before finally assembling it, but that's most of it. Here you can see another view, and again, 
here it is finished and assembled. Um, the only caps I had to buy that, that weren't in my junk box were the green electrolytics you see. They are fancy uh, Nishikon Muse capacitors. I assume they are meant for uh, speaker crossover use or audio use in general with a name like that. Um, they're not non-polar, which was... Uh, I, I was wondering what I was going to do about the, the, the electrolytics, the high-value caps, and whether I would just end up making them polarized. But when I found these, perfect. Of course, the, the, I had to add a board there to hold the, the bigger caps, and uh, in several cases I just had to put caps in parallel to get the, uh, the capacitance I needed. And there it is, finished. And being tested and finally the finished product so now let's move on to some actual video of it in action okay I've got the box set to zero and we can see about 36 puff of uh, stray capacitance so you could argue well why bother with, with the last uh, digit or two but, you know, they're still useful for doing incremental changes, so what the hey. Let's uh, zero that out. So now we're seeing around zero. And I'll start incrementing the, uh, the one puff. One. Two. Hmm, okay. <laughs> Looks like the strays change here. Three. Well, at least it's going monotonically. Four. Five. Six, seven, hmm, six, yeah, yeah, it's going up, eight, nine, back to zero. Okay, so the LSD is a little bit wonky. Let's go to the tens. Ten puff, twenty, hmm, thirty, forty. Zero hundreds. Now we're now we're cooking. It looks like the switches introduce slightly differing uh, uh, stray capacitances in their different positions. Um, okay. One nano, two nano. So, of course, I did hand-pick most of the capacitors to, uh, or all of them, I guess, <laughs> to be as close as possible. Now, this meter starts to get a little, uh, starts to peter out somewhere into the next range, in the hundreds of nanofarads, if I remember correctly. But we can switch to another one. Yeah, there. Reads 300 correctly, 400, not so happy. I'll just show you an example of a combined setting. Uh, 10 nanofarads, 11, 11 11.1, 11.11, 11.111. Ooh, it actually changed. Oh, maybe not. Anyway, you get the idea. It, it does kind of work. Okay, let's go up to the higher ranges. Okay, continuing with the, the hundreds of nanofarads. I'll switch to my HP. 200, three, four. Now we get into the uh, electrolytic range. I'll probably have to do some uh, Rejigging of the controls at some point. One microfarad, two. It's unhappy. Okay. Three, four. I wasn't able to maintain accuracy up here. It's uh, <laughs> we're getting our best attempt at some of these values. I didn't feel like spending more than. $30 or so on lytics. 
or I could have made up more combinations or found some closer parts. But it, you know, it'll do the trick. Nine, oh, that's very accurate. And 10, now we're into the tens. Okay, not so good. <laughs> that's 50, 60, 70, 80, not really. 90, well at least it goes up. 100.5, I believe I made it monotonic into the, uh, the hundreds digit. No, I didn't. Good for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, 100, 200, 300, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 7 is the highest digit I took it to. It seemed pointless putting an 800 microfarad cap in there just for two top uh, settings of that digit. So there you go. The cap sub box.